the University of California, Berkeley, 1964, the birth of the free speech movement, left-wing student activists asserting their right to free expression, leading to mass arrests and a full year of protests. This year, Berkeley once again is at the center of a national controversy over free expression, this time over the right of conservatives to express their views. And it's the left now being accused of trying to suppress free speech. This month, Berkeley canceled a speech by conservative firebrand Ann Coulter, citing fears her appearance could lead to a violent backlash. Joining me now, Ann Coulter and Berkeley professor and former Clinton Labor Secretary Robert Reich. Professor Reich, let me start with you. You and Ann Coulter agree on basically nothing. But you said that Berkeley made a, quote, grave mistake by canceling her speech. Why do you believe that? Uh, Jonathan, I, as you said, I, I, uh, I don't remember ever agreeing with Ann Coulter <laughs> on anything. Maybe there is something Ann and I have agreed on. Uh, but I do believe in the First Amendment, and I will fight for her right to say what she wants to say. The First Amendment is, and freedom of speech is, the cornerstone of our democracy. And whether it's college campuses, or it's somebody burning a flag, or it's uh, the newspapers having a right to say whatever they want, uh, we cannot toy around with the First Amendment. It is absolutely critical. And. Well, it, thank you, Professor, um, for allowing me my constitutional <laughs> rights. Um, but I, I mean, I must say, I think this this debate has, I mean, first of all, has divided leftists in the country from those who believe in the Constitution and those who don't. Um, I think we've seen this this thuggish violence at university after university after university. Mario Savio, the one who stood up in the 60s and, you know, yelled free speech at Berkeley. Yeah, that was free speech for lefties. But like they say about democracy in the third world, one man, one vote, one time. As soon as the lefties took over the university, that's it. Free speech is shut down. Um, but anyway, I think that hill, when we have Obama, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, and Bill Maher, among others, <laughs> um, all saying, of course, um, you should let Ann Coulter speak and not let violent thugs shut it down. Okay, we're done with that hill. Now let's move on to the hill where it's considered, I, I mean, some of these people, not you, Professor, um, you know, keep saying, well, of course it's hateful, but hateful speech is allowed to exist. No, I'm sorry, I'm but engaging Anne, in a public policy debate. But, but um, Anne, that is not a hateful speech. I think those are the lefties we need to... to to discuss uh, with next, these are but, these but, are important issues of public policy. But 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 Anne, the reaction of students at a place like Berkeley can't surprise you, given some of the things you have said. Oh please! Uh, I mean, well, let's just take a look. You've you've said that getting rid of women's right to vote is a personal fantasy. You said of one group of 9/11 widows, and I quote, "I've never seen people enjoying their husbands' death so much." And then there was the tweet that you. Uh, put out just the day before the election saying, if only people with at least four grandparents born in America were voting, Trump would win in a 50-state landslide. I mean, on that one, by the way, neither Donald Trump or Mike Pence would be able to vote. Um... I, let's sh okay. Let's just take that one. We can go through all the greatest hits of much of my commentary. Um, I watch roughly 24 hours a day the Hispanic vote, the Hispanic the vote, the Hispanic vote. How the how the uh, you know the Browning of America and how are African Americans voting? How are women voting? I describe one demographic and say how it would come out, um, and, and that's hate speech. Why isn't it a hate speech to keep telling me how Hispanics are going to vote? Um, what you're talking about are rhetorical flourishes, and I don't know, maybe you guys think you are smarter than, than the Founding Fathers, but they did not put an asterisk on the First Amendment. Maybe, no, we, you know, we all the agree. Founding Fathers just forgot about that, that, and no rhetorical flourishes, no jokes. <laughs> Well, we, we, we finally found something, uh, after all these years, where I agree with Ann Coulter. Uh, that is, there is no hate speech exemption for the First Amendment. So I, I want to ask you about the, the similar controversy that we saw at Middlebury over Charles Murray's uh, uh, attempted speech, uh, which caused violent protests. He ultimately was unable to speak. And then a student at Middlebury explained the situation to the New York Times this way. For too long, a flawed notion of free speech has allowed individuals in position of power to spread racist pseudoscience in academic institution, dehumanizing and subjugating people of color and gender minorities. 
So you're there, you're a professor at Berkeley. You spend a lot of time with very smart millennials. Are you concerned that there is a, a growing view among young activists that freedom of speech simply does not apply to offensive speech, that there is that asterisk? Uh, Jonathan, to the extent that there is that view uh, at Berkeley or any place else, I am concerned because one of the purposes of a university education is to be mm -hmm. provoked, uh, to examine mm -hmm. what the evidence is. And if somebody says something that is offensive, uh, well, that is not per se, you know, a, a violation of uh, any kind of university norm. In fact, quite the opposite. I tell my students all the time the best way to learn something is to talk to people who disagree with you because that forces uh, that forces you to sharpen your views and test your views and you might even uh, might even come out in a different place. A, a university of all places is the is the is the is the locus where we want to have provocative views. We want to have views that some people find to be offensive. Hey Ann, can we find another place where the two of you might agree? I want to. I want to ask you, and, we, and I talked to uh, Reince Priebus about it here just a, a short while ago, about what the president has said about opening up the libel laws. And we heard uh, Priebus say that this is something they are still looking into. In other words, giving the president the ability to sue the New York Times or other news organizations for coverage uh, that, that, that he does not like. Can we agree that that is not a good idea? Um, I can answer that very quickly. No, I've always thought there should be a pure truth falsity standard and a limit on damages. But I do want to agree with the professor um, on universities ought to be places where I am not the only conservative most students will hear in four years of college. And what this shows, this whole incident shows, again, it shows this radical insulated left on the college campuses and the entire left wing, including President Obama and Bill Maher on the other side, mm. and what useless institutions our universities are. The prices have gone up 3,000% um, since the 70s. Is the education better? No, it's worse. The lefties are on the side of the thugs. They've taken over the universities. I don't think anyone learns anything at college anymore. It's a four-year vacation, and I think that's what people ought to be looking at because the taxpayers are supporting these universities, not just University of California, but with federal grants, every university in America. Uh, if I can just get to your question, uh, Jonathan, uh, the libel laws should not be widened. I mean, we really do need a free press. One thing that concerns me about the present administration is the willingness of the administration to not only talk about, about widening the libel laws and also uh, criminalize flag burning, uh, but uh, even the President of the United States last night using an opportunity in Harrisburg uh, to summon his, his supporters and to criticize the press once again, uh, this is dangerous. I mean, if we believe in the First Amendment, we believe in a free and independent press. All right, Professor Robert Reich, Ann Coulter, a debate that you couldn't have seen at Berkeley. Thank you for joining us on this week. Thank you.